uh, first and foremost uh, thanks for uh, inviting me to this uh, stage which uh, where there are a lot of uh, uh, veterans from the, the industry that we look up to obviously dr ybr sir uh, atul mule sir and all uh, so for all those who uh, those who don't don't know me my entry ticket is the is the is the picture that you see on the screen so that is asia's largest bio cng plant based on msw it also happens to be uh, uh, india's largest operational uh, bio cng plant or rng plant as we call it uh, this is in the city of indore uh, this was inaugurated by the honorable prime minister of india last uh, a, couple, a couple of months back i'll be talking more about it uh, and uh, in general my intention is to share some insights on, uh, from the field uh, not just indore but other agro residues uh, based plants and and maybe try to sh draw some relevance for the sugar industry <coughs> so this is the agenda that uh, you know i have kept uh, first and foremost maybe why biosing is important for india i'll not spend too much time because uh, uh, my seniors here have already spent a lot of time on that on aspects related to why this is important for india the climate as aspects so maybe i'll talk more about again on uh, some notes from the field and another very important aspect uh, which is money uh, 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 we all have to make money and maybe i'll talk about some numbers again from the field uh, finally yeah what are the right models for the sugar industry and going beyond pmc now before that uh, very quickly i'll just touch upon who we are just to set the context i'll not spend much time just a uh, you know one slide on that now just to give an overview uh, gps renewables is a uh, biogas technology and epc firm i am one of i am the co-founder and ceo of the firm this is a company that had started right after graduating from uh, iim bangalore uh, today uh, very proud to say that we uh, are executing uh, projects worth around 2000 crores that is 250 million dollars we are sitting on a pipeline of around uh, 4500 crores so north of a half a billion dollars and all uh, i say this not to market ourselves but to talk about where this biosynge industry is headed and this is i'm talking of a company that we had started literally from scratch and again thanks to all the policy interventions and all and especially due to the efforts of people like ybr sir and all that is what many of us like are are actually witnessing on the ground today uh, in terms of the track record as i mentioned uh, we have commissioned uh, asia's largest biosynge cng plant very recently uh, we commissioned what is the world's fastest executed cbg plant this is for reliance industries at barabanki this is the project that mr mukesh ambani had spoken about in the last reliance agm we have a very strong r d team with multiple patents i have uh, some of my senior colleagues uh, out here in the audience such as dr uh, rana de sir who was ex director of agarkar uh, research institute dr gore sir again a veteran from the uh, alcohol industry of india we are around 375 members uh, strong uh, we are the first indian startup to have raised private equity funding in this particular space and finally uh, uh, we are co-developing projects as well we have a joint venture with iocl now moving on to some notes from the field uh, this is the project i was talking about now uh, some interesting uh, insights for all of you could be i mean this was uh, we had a lot of learnings from this project. When we started working on this project, I mean, uh, the ecosystem uh, uh, was they were hardly existed in India. In fact, even today, it is still developing. So uh, despite that, uh, very proud to say that we were able to cold commission the system, reach uh, uh, in nine months and reach COD in 15 months. This was despite the COVID second wave, the Suez crisis and record rains and all. I mean, this gave us the confidence that it is possible to maybe achieve COD in 12 months. And this is something we, which we have already achieved for our partners such as Reliance. Second thing, I mean, uh, again, uh, we were able to, despite the speed, we were able to do this without any incidents and all. So with a cent percent HSE track record. Finally, and most importantly, talking about the financial aspects, here we have been able to consistently generate more than 100 cubic meters uh, of raw biogas per ton of uh, MSW. Of course, it is a function of the quality of the waste and things like that, but it was again a very important benchmark. Today, as I speak, it generates, it is generating around 15 to 16 tons of CBG, and it took us a year. Having said that, it did not happen on day one. We had a lot of challenges such as sand and silt, uh, you know, as I uh, mentioned on this uh, screen. But again, uh, 
uh, and this is a reality of India with so much construction happening. Uh, talking of PMC, you might not have the right pads everywhere. A lot of uh, g uh, sand and sand may creep in along with the feedstocks and all. Things are never ideal uh, out here in our country. Having said that, uh, what I can say with utmost confidence is that it is possible to run plants despite all of that consistently. Uh, again, similarly, VPSA, we had a lot of we had faced a lot of challenges on the biogas upgradation side. Having said that, again, we were able to fix many of these issues in house. What we can say is that it's not rocket science. It took its own sweet time. But today, as I as I say, I mean, we are running multiple plants with uh, almost 100 percent uh, uptime. And, and, and this is across multiple feedstocks and all. Similarly, talking about Barabanki, the project that I was talking about, this is a, a plant that runs on a combination of paddy straw, press mud cake, and cow dung. Uh, this was cold commissioned in less than nine months, and, and the COD was achieved in less than 12 months and all. Uh, we introduced a number of new, uh, uh, you know, like uh, ideas in this particular project, which is now being replicated in many other projects across the country as I speak. So one was introduction of slip form uh, for uh, erecting of digesters and all. It's not a new concept otherwise, but in the CBG space, in the bias CNG space, uh, we took a leap of faith and tried this. Today, again, what we can say confidently is that we can erect uh, tanks in just three days. The shuttering and all does take time, but as far as the actual erection is concerned, uh, I mean, we are, uh, we are actually doing it in less than uh, 72 hours and all. Another thing is that uh, as a part of this project, we introduced membrane-based biogas upgradation units, which we manufacture ourselves. We have a partnership with Ube from Japan, and uh, uh, we are consistently reaching uh, methane purity levels of in the range of 98 to 99 percent and which again uh, i'm sharing this from the perspective of the industry that uh, and it's not just us who are doing this uh, today i mean we are seeing tremendous changes happening not just on the policy side but in terms of uh, developments on the field through be it us or many of uh, many other companies of course needless to say uh, such as praj uh, and other uh, other uh, uh, technology and epc companies in the sector now, uh, that's a bit about us and some uh, some notes from the field. I'll skip this particular, uh, 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 these slides which talk about why this is important for India. Uh, a lot has been spoken about. Maybe just touch upon one part which is, uh, while the initial uh, uh, uptick, uh, it took some time for Satat to heat up and all, today we can see that happening. Uh, that is how industry starts. Starts. Uh, that is what I'm told. I'm not so old, but that's what I'm told. But I can see that happening. Uh, as we speak, we, uh, uh, we, we command a significant business of uh, Reliance Bioenergy's uh, compressed biogas projects today. And we know firsthand that already many of these numbers are committed. Someone uh, like Reliance has already committed around a billion dollars in this industry. Uh, the PSUs, most of the PSUs are coming up with joint ventures and all. Uh, IOCL, as an example, has a, uh, has did already have a joint venture with Praj. Today they have a joint venture with us as well. Uh, and there are many other project developers who are coming into the sector. Uh, as we speak, uh, we uh, are already seeing uh, commitments worth a few billion dollars that have already happened in the CBG sector. Uh, finally, what gives further push are the various policy intervention which have be already been uh, spoken about. The most important thing are trends. In general, m m lots of these tremendous changes ha have happened in the last few months and which I feel is amazing because uh, normally such things take years and all. But here we are uh, seeing massive movement as far as the uh, as far as uh, different departments coming together to, to make BioCNG bio happen. Now, uh, uh, some relevant, uh, you know, uh, uh, numbers uh, as far as the sugar industry is concerned. So here, I mean, uh, uh, sharing some uh, some uh, a standard uh, a sample financial model for what uh, you know uh, what could a, a typical biocng plant look like for a for a sugar mill. Now, again, before getting into that, uh, one disclaimer: uh, Excel sheets are like uh, video games; they are addictive. Uh, things are very different when you are doing this on a keyboard versus on the ground, which is like a battlefield. So, so there are you know lots of moving parts. I mean, things would always be different on the ground. But these are numbers that we can confidently talk about to, with a certain degree of confidence based on what we have seen on the ground. Now, here what I've taken is a sample case of uh, a 12,000 TCD uh, sugar mill. 
now uh, uh, and again there are some, some standard assumptions around how much press mud cake can be generated and all we are talking about approximately 240 tons of C, uh, uh, press mud cake generation which uh, assuming a typical 4% yield also uh, 3 and 1/2 to 4% yield we are talking about cbg generation of in the range of 9.6 to 10 tons per day now uh, considering some standard uh, market assumptions and all this is what maybe you know like the roi uh, some of the key metrics that could look like now uh, while there are a lot of moving pieces and all goes without saying the price of cbg one of the most important pieces at what price one can sell the compost uh, fom that's another major driver but leaving that aside for a change capex is a very important aspect as well so here you can see how the roi changes for various numbers and all again we are talking of roughly a 10 tpd uh, cbg plant and uh, different scenarios ranging from 45 crores to 70 crores essentially what i'm trying to drive home the point is that what should be the right capex uh, in terms of per tpd uh, uh, as you can see as long as it's within say 50 cr so as long as it's within idly within 5 cr per tpd numbers look fine as far as banks are concerned if you look at the dsar ratios and all things are fine as we go higher around 6 or uh, higher numbers are a bit shaky and all and this is at a 70 30 debt equity ratio these are these are discussions we cannot avoid these are something things banks inevitably they will look at irrespective of whatever the government pushes now uh, so uh, the the key point is that idly uh, you know the capex for a cbg plant should be around 5 cr uh, 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 and idly not go beyond 6 cr per tpd uh, now this in the sh in the sugar industry we believe it's difficult to achieve uh, below a capacity of 9 to 10 tpd now there are, could be ways to cut corners and all one can set up plants uh, you know uh, in uh, there are various pathways of setting up uh, uh, cbg plants and all there are so many technology pathways there are so many pathways for biogas upgradation and all but if one were to do it with uh, proper technical integrity I mean, 9 to 10 TPD is what we feel are the ideal numbers and all. Uh, so these are, uh, uh, this is a, these are few numbers that uh, uh, I'd like to share. Uh, the other thing is, um, uh, and uh, again, uh, from our own experience, what we can say is that as far as Paddy Straw is concerned, we have already been able to bring this number below uh, this particular threshold. Having said that, that's at a much higher scale. We are talking about 20 tons per day scale and above. Uh, uh, as far as press mud cake, uh, is concerned i mean uh, we are already i mean many players are already in the range that we are talking about uh, expecting anything below that would be uh, uh, you know might not be very realistic but this is very much doable so the key point is that it's important that uh, uh, you know like uh, uh, if some if anyone is a project developer you try you should try to idly look at the scale uh, around that 10 tpd scale uh, now in terms of now what are the various models that one can look at while setting up plants one is uh, as i mentioned idly maybe 10000 tcd now this might not be the case with many sugar mills so that's where maybe the idea could be to club multiple sugar mills and all which are in a geographical vicinity number of people are already doing that ownership now it's again a function of at the end of the day what is one's risk appetite from a sugar mills perspective how is their balance sheet and all uh, there are today various models out there there are a lot of project developers uh, uh, climate funds who are coming to the sector who are happy to invest in these plants and all you one can co-own plants and all and as we speak all these models are today coexisting again similarly pmc pricing Either one can go for a long-term, uh, you know, uh, price offtake. Uh, this is definitely a low-risk, low-upside, uh, you know, model. The other thing is that pricing. Th there are also cases where people are pricing, and we have done that, where the pricing has been indexed to the buy CNG prices. Not having said that, uh, the higher potential upside comes with a higher risk as well. There could be a downside as well. So, uh, and people have also integrated, you know, uh, the PMC cost in in the form of sweat equities and all. But these are a few models which are happening as we speak. And finally, BioCNG offtake, right from own retail outlet. That's the beauty of the Satat and the BioCNG policy in India to private take or pay agreements to Satat or grid injection as YBR sir and others talk about. These uh, these are the various models out there. Uh, at the end of the day, as I mentioned, it's a call that one has to take. But uh, there is there are there is enough material out there in public domain uh, uh, you know that what can refer to uh, but as long as some of these key numbers are there too we feel that you know uh, this is eminently doable final slide uh, uh, now uh, 
PMC is the starting point. It's a it's a very easy feedstock to deal with. But again, as other speakers also have spoken about, there are massive possibilities beyond that. Now there are again the numbers that I show are based on certain assumptions. But the key point is that if you can see the potential CVG that can be generated from other uh, you know like uh, uh, some of the other uh, aspects of the sugar industry such as bagasse or cane trash could be much higher. Having said that, it has its own challenges and all. Pre-treatment is a key challenge. And, and we believe the holy grail is a cost-effective microbial pretreatment. That is where institutes like BSI come in and all. And um, I mean, and that is why I think uh, India uh, could command uh, a leadership given the huge biosciences community, given the, uh, you know, like the uh, uh, leadership of organizations such as BIRAC and all. But we believe that could be the, uh, uh, that could be the way. So, so uh, I'll, uh, you know, I'll stop here. Uh, so that's it from my end. Final point, I mean, uh, uh, all I would like to say is that biosync your CBG here is is definitely here to stay, and uh, uh, I think uh, if anyone has doubts, I mean I would like to say that it is one of the most tangible biofuels out there. It is already com uh, competing with its fossil fuel equivalent. So if someone is in doubt, you should definitely think about investing, be it your money or your time into uh, CBG. Uh, as far as we are concerned. Uh, we are a very proud Indian company. We today we have we are already uh, have Indianized 95% of our supply chain. Our import component of the projects that we execute is less than 5%. So we are always open to uh, working with uh, Indian equipment suppliers and all. So so uh, if we uh, cannot meet, happy to you know connect on LinkedIn elsewhere. And the final point is that for equipment supplies from outside of India, my only uh, suggestion would be that the action is here. Maybe you should sh set up shop in India. Uh, I mean, uh, otherwise you might not be so competitive in the future. So that's about it. Thank you. Uh, Jai Hind.